Hello and welcome to the Wrestle Talk News. I am Luke Owen. Today's episode is going to be a pretty serious one. In fact, it's a very serious one. Actually, you know what? In, in further fact, I'm not going to do it in costume. I'm afraid that I'll be covering some very serious allegations, which are both vulgar and distressing. Please, please be sensible in the comments. In June 2022, the Wall Street Journal released a report that WWE were investigating its then CEO, Vince McMahon, over the use of company funds to pay hush money to the tune of $3 million to cover up an alleged affair. John Laurinaitis, who was head of talent relations at the time, was also part of this investigation. That figure then rose to $12 million as it was revealed in another Wall Street Journal report that there were multiple instances of non-disclosure agreement, an NDA, to cover up allegations of sexual misconduct and infidelity. Following the first Wall Street Journal report, Vince McMahon returned to TV screens on both Raw and SmackDown to show how these allegations were not affecting him. However, after the second report, Vince stepped down as CEO of WWE and announced his retirement in July of 2022. He was replaced as CEO by his daughter, Stephanie McMahon, and Nick Khan, while his son-in-law, Triple H, took over as head of creative. WWE formed a special committee of independent board members to investigate the matter, which disbanded in November of 2022 when their investigation was complete. They discovered that McMahon had paid $19.6 million in hush money payments to former female employees. He was still on the board of directors though, and in December of 2022, it was reported that Vince McMahon was looking to get back into the company in an unretired role, which he managed despite originally being told by the board that he couldn't. Vince got his way back into the company to facilitate a sale of WWE, saying that he would not approve of any sale unless he was involved. How did Vince manage this? Well, he replaced the board of people who said no with people who said yes. Stephanie McMahon, who just prior to the original Wall Street Journal article stepped down from WWE, then stepped back up to be co-CEO, stepped down again after Vince McMahon stepped back up. Vince began getting involved with WWE's creative following WrestleMania 39, including a heavily criticized Raw After Mania. He then worked behind the scenes to sell WWE, striking a deal with Endeavor, which was announced in April 2023 and completed later that year. This new group was called TKO, and Vince McMahon was a high-level board member of it. In a move that he probably didn't see coming, though, his new boss, Ari Emanuel, made the call to remove Vince from the creative side of WWE so he could just focus on selling TV rights for Raw, SmackDown, and NXT, which was already sort of a Nick Khan role. TKO themselves noted in their first SEC filings that Vince McMahon was a liability based on the allegations, which is why his presence has been kept to a minimum. This past week, TKO announced that Dwayne The Rock Johnson had joined the board of directors and they'd signed a huge money deal to move Raw to Netflix in January of 2025. It's been speculated that The Rock would become the face of WWE to further minimize Vince McMahon's role in the company. Which brings us up to date and brings us to the latest Wall Street Journal article and the latest lawsuit against Vince McMahon that alleges him of sexual misconduct, coercion, and sex trafficking. The new report details a lawsuit filed against WWE, Vince McMahon, and John Laurinaitis from a former employee named Janelle Grant. The suit alleges that Grant met McMahon when they lived in the same apartment building in 2019, and Vince brought her into WWE to work in the legal department in a new role that he created specifically for her, and that McMahon showered her with gifts. The Wall Street Journal writes, during meetings that were supposed to be about the job, he greeted her in his underwear and repeatedly asked for hugs. Then, the suit says, he pressured her into sexual activities in return for employment and warned her to stay quiet quiet about their interactions. Allegedly, although Grant expressed concerns about a job she felt was unearned, McMahon told her that it just has to look legit. Grant alleges that her colleagues complained about having too much work while she had little to do. It was during this time the suit alleges that McMahon would send her sexually explicit messages and increased sexual demands, including, but not limited to, using sex toys on her 
named after WWE wrestlers. The Wall Street Journal writes, Grant alleged that she complained to McMahon and made attempts to end the relationship. The suit says Grant came to understand that McMahon expected the physical relationship to continue as part of her employment. It also adds McMahon refused to end the relationship, saying that it was not ending, it did not need to, and that he did not ever envision it ending. Grant alleges that McMahon and an executive locked her in an office at WWE's headquarters and took turns sexually assaulting her. She claims other instances of rape in June of 2021, and later that day received $15,000 in Bloomingdale's gift cards. The suit has a text message that says, Vince said, I'm the only one who owns you, and controls you. Grant also alleges that McMahon would share the sexually explicit pictures of her with other WWE employees, unnamed executives, and stars, as well as people outside the company. And the suit provides a series of text messages where Vince McMahon bragged about showing these to employees in WWE's technical department in July of 2020, while also offering her up to them for sexual favors. The suit claims that in November of 2019, Grant showed signs of sleep disruption, dizziness, exhaustion, rashes, weight loss, hair loss, and migraines. She saw her doctor, who told her these were symptoms of trauma, to which McMahon allegedly responded, emotional trauma, my ass, and sent her instead to his own celebrity doctor, where she received attention, treatments, and products, all of which paid for by Vince McMahon. The suit alleges that McMahon encouraged those he sent her sexually explicit photos to to share them with their friends. This includes a former WWE referee who McMahon assured Grant had loyalty to him. The suit alleges that in June 2021, Grant was moved to work under John Laurinaitis in the talent relations department where she was instructed by McMahon to meet Laurinaitis at his hotel room prior to the start of work days for sex. The suit claims that McMahon described her as breakfast for Laurinaitis. The suit alleges in the same month, McMahon and Laurinaitis sexually assaulted Grant. The Wall Street Journal writes, McMahon controlled her professional and personal lives and subjected her to degradation, according to the suit. A huge part of this suit claims that Grant was used as a bargaining chip to sign someone to WWE. The suit alleges that Grant was instructed by McMahon to create personalized sexual content for this wrestler and when they agreed to a new WWE contract, McMahon texted Grant in August of 2021 that part of the deal was f you. The suit does not name this individual, but notes they are both a WWE star and former UFC heavyweight champion. The Wall Street Journal writes, people familiar with the matter identify the wrestler as Brock Lesnar, who then returned to WWE at SummerSlam 2021. The suit alleges that McMahon gave Grant a new cell phone just for her to send sexual content to this WWE star, who degraded her, but wanted to set a play date in December 2021, which did not happen due to a snowstorm disrupting travel plans. The suit claims Mr. McMahon also subjected Miss Grant to acts of extreme cruelty and degradation that caused Miss Grant to disassociate and or become numb to reality in order to survive the horrific encounters. It's alleged that in January 2022, Linda McMahon, Vince McMahon's wife, discovered the relationship and that Grant was let go by WWE. Vince then allegedly pressured Grant into signing an NDA and warned Grant of reputational ruin that included pornographic content he had of her. Allegedly, McMahon paid Grant $1 million in February as part of this NDA, but stopped making payments. These lack of payments is what broke the NDA, which is how Grant was able to file this suit. Finally, the suit alleges that even after the NDA was signed in February, the abuse continued, as McMahon attempted to traffic her to an unnamed WWE star in March 2022 at an event in New York City. The Wall Street Journal writes she texted the star explicit photos as directed by McMahon, but they didn't meet. Grant had previously gone unnamed in other Wall Street Journal articles, though her name was posted by Brad Shepard on Twitter, which he got via a WWE source. It is alleged in the lawsuit that WWE leaked this name to Shepard as an overt intimidation tactic. Anne Callis, the lawyer representing Janelle Grant, said, Today's complaint seeks to hold accountable two WWE executives who sexually assaulted and trafficked plaintiff Janelle Grant, as well as the organization that facilitated or turned a blind eye to the abuse and then swept it under the rug. She is an incredibly private and courageous person who has suffered deeply at the hands of Mr. McMahon and Mr. Laurinaitis. Ms. Grant hopes that her lawsuit will prevent other women from being victimized. The organization is well aware of Mr. McMahon's history of 
depraved behavior, and it's time they took responsibility for the misconduct of its leadership. In a statement to Variety, TKO said, Mr. McMahon does not control TKO, nor does he oversee the day-to-day -day operations of WWE. While this matter predates our TKO executive team's tenure at the company, we take Ms. Grant's horrific allegations very seriously and are addressing this matter internally. A representative for Vince McMahon denied the allegations to Deadline, saying this lawsuit is replete with lies, obscene, made-up instances that never occurred, and a vindictive distortion of the truth. He will vigorously defend himself. As for Brock Lesnar, Fightful Select report that he was planned for an appearance at this weekend's Royal Rumble. However, in light of Lesnar's implied inclusion in the Vince McMahon lawsuit, that may change. As for the investigation by WWE by that special committee, the suit claims that Janelle Grant was never even contacted for an interview, despite stating that she would cooperate and share any documents and evidence, and alleges that all it did was try and shift the focus. The suit claims that the company diverted attention away from McMahon's abuse by focusing on the accounting for the payouts. Others at WWE knew about McMahon's misconduct, but worked to conceal the wrongdoing. The suit calls the internal investigation a sham. So, what happens next? Really, not a lot. These are matters that, according to TKO, will be looked into, and McMahon will fight this in court. As for McMahon's role within TKO and its board of directors, Brandon Thurston of WrestleNomics notes via Twitter that TKO cannot force Vince McMahon out. They cannot fire him. Or, at the very least, it's unclear whether they can fire him. Their own filings note that Vincent K. McMahon shall serve as the executive chair of the board until the earliest of his death, resignation, or incapacitation. Basically, as Thurston puts it, TKO may instead need to somehow convince him to resign if they want him gone. According to the suit, Janelle Grant has been left crippled both physically and mentally, including from debilitating symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder and suicidal ideation. As with many cases like this, these are allegations, these are claims. Janelle Grant has made her claims and Vince McMahon has denied them. It's not up to us to determine who is right and who is wrong. All we can do is follow the story. But if you would like something lighter, you can check out this episode of TLC where we talk about bad wrestling music. I, I hope you have a nice Friday.